All right, guys, uh, we are going to do a little bit of a demo for the Gravity Framework, which is a, I would say, kind of an alternative to WordPress. And we're going to show the structure a little bit so people can understand how to get started. Um, Ian, uh, you've been working on the Gravity Framework. You actually came up with the name, so thank you for that. <laughs> um, so for anybody that I'm going to open Gravity with uh, Visual Studio Code. And when we do that, I'm going to close out all these other files that are already there. And I'm just going to show the structure a little bit. So we have these main um, folders here. The majority of the actual application is in the Gravity app folder. Um, but there's several other folders, such as public, which contains um, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS files that are needed uh, when you're hosting. Um, it contains schema files for uh, different structures of messages going back and forth. Um, and then this views folder contains a lot of the um, way that things look. Um, it's the HTML that gets served when you go to uh, the website hosted by Gravity. Um, and uh, there's a readme file which gets you started. So if you guys are just starting out on the documentation, uh, links to the Docs app using Gravity. So Ian, you were questioning a bit how to actually get started, um, what happened what ha the way that I get started usually when you're developing, we're gonna we're gonna go into the Gravity app app folder, and I'm gonna type Python Gravity Server .py. I want people to see what's happening here. So um, we start up the web server here, and it is serving both an HTTP and an HTTPS server, um, which is why you see this 443 here. Um, and the HTTP server is on port 80. So if I now open a browser, um, I'm going to go here. I'm going to type localhost. It's actually going to bring me up a web page. So all that we did there was we went to the local uh, server and pulled up the web page. But what actually happened? Where does this come from? It comes from, like, so the first thing that happens is it comes in here and looks for, I'm going to skip a couple of the, like, route, which was what I put in here, which is localhost. So anything past the slash is considered where the route is. But without anything there, it's going to come here, and it's going to come to the controllers. Ian, do you know what a, a model view and controller Yeah, yeah, basically, like Rails is like a model view controller thing, and Node's a model view controller. They're both that similar. So, mo so the model is kind of the data. The view is what gets displayed, and the controller is kind of how things behave. So when we come in with no route, so it's a, just a, a blank route, um, it's going to find this controller, and this controller is called home. So I'm now going to go over to the gravitycontrollers.py folder file and look for the function home. The function home renders a template called index.j2. And this is a template file that, show, that gives you the HTML to start with. Where does index.j2 live? Index.j2 lives in the views directory here under this index.j2 here. So basically I've gone in here, I'm gonna change this so it looks like HTML formatting. And if we look up here, we say the web framework for humanity. So let's, let's just change this real quick and say um, Ian's uh, first website. So I'm going to change that, and because this is not actually compiled into the program, I can change that on the fly, and what I'm expecting here is that this should change. 
and see how that changed to Ian's yeah. first website. So this is the file that's generating the structure of this page. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's only a piece of the puzzle though. So basically the first thing that happens is that we make a request, we find the route that matches it, we find the controller that matches that route, we find the view, it takes the information from that, uh, that view uh, file, renders it and sends it back to the client. That's all, that all makes sense to you, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so now what happens? So let's say we're at a blog post. So we're now at a different blog. Um, we're gonna go back to the, the gravity routes and we're gonna look at blog. So you see a blog has controllers, right? So we're gonna go to gravity controllers again, but instead of going to the home function, we're gonna look at the blog function. So I'm gonna go back to gravity control. This is not static information. This is being pulled from a database file. So I could actually edit the database file and things would change here, um, which I'll show you in a second. But I wanna explain this real quick. So first, then, when we come into the controller for the blog, we call this function, this, this class called gravity blog, and we say, get the blog items. And then what happens is it goes in, basically in the database, pulls out all the blog items and, and puts them into this object. And if it comes back as none, I just create a blank object. But if it comes back as something in there, then I'm just inserting them into uh, this context. And then what happens is I pass the blog items that were pulled from the database into the uh, template. And instead of index.j2, which we looked at before, now we're looking at blog.j2 and we're passing in context. So let's go back down to our um, views folder and we are going to look at blog.j2 here. And this is also the same structure as before. Hey there, this is Nikki. <laughs> we're on a live stream, so or we're recording a video. Um, so see how, um, you're welcome to come in. Um, Gravity Framework, you go to blog, and the same thing that could happen here is I'm gonna say, instead of Gravity Blog, I'm gonna say Ian's blog. And that, See how that changed to Ian's blog, right? So, information here gets generated because it was passed in with blog items. And it does a loop here. So for each blog item, I create an item, and then I and it was created. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that is what shows up here. Where does this information actually live? That's an important part. Um, so it's living inside of, this is actually, I'm gonna move this very soon because it lives in this blog uh, folder. This is actually data. So this blog folder is gonna move into this data thing very in the next upcoming release. Um, but if I look at blog.j2, I see this file here. And this is the file that generates everything that's happening here. And it's just a JSON file. And it contains the date and time that was created, the title, the text, and the subtitle. And then some information that's not shown. So the label is not shown. But if you look here, and I clicked... Oh, we haven't implemented that, actually. But mm. um, the idea would be if we clicked here, that would go to a particular blog page. So this is, this is the way to identify this particular blog post. Um, so, okay, so now let's look back here. I'm in New York is what it says here. So I'm gonna change the title to say, this is, this is Ian's first blog post. So now it's gonna look up in the database and the data, data in the database has changed. And there is no database on purpose here right now because I want it to be very simple for, for people to understand what's going on. 
eventually this will live either in a MySQL database or a, My, uh, or a Mongo database. But for right now, I'm making it purposely in a file so people can easily understand what is happening. So if I refresh the page, see how this changed to Ian's first blog post, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then I changed the subtitle. So we are going to talk about gravity. And I'm going to change this to be this. This is the first blog post about the gravity framework. So if I check this out, I see that all of these things have changed, right, on mm. the main site. Ian, do you have any questions so far? Yeah, how do you ID the blog? Because that's the, that's the most recent blog, right? But what is right. it, are the IDs automatically set? So right now there's a label. So this is the label that's going to be IDing the blog. Um, if we go to events. The so label this, is slug kind of thing? that I lowercase and then put a dash in between the words. So you could go in and loop over the titles. So a better example of this, though, is for us to look at um, the event platform. So if we go to events, um, we have upcoming events, and we have all these events that are here, right? I'm going to go back and look at um, the folder data. And then I'm going to look at events.json. Very similar structure to what you saw in the blogs, right? Except uh, it's event item instead of blog items. And in this case, I do have an ID here. So I have a random ID that I generated that identifies each item, each event item. <laughs> Excuse me. And then I also have a label. So the way I've built it is that you can identify a event based on the label or the ID. Make sense? Yeah. So if we go back here, so this is what we're going to be building uh, on the next iteration of the blog. So if I click on Gravity Webinar here, you see how this, the, the label here went to slash event slash this is a test event for New York, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's this page. So the blog item will be, act very, very similar. So, but if I also, I believe this works, I'm gonna test this. So if I switch this out here, and instead of using the label, I use the ID, I get the same page. Does that make cool. sense? Yeah. So the, ID, the idea will be that this, in, so like, in, I'm gonna actually go to thegravityframework.com there is a one event that's actually up there so people can understand um, the gravity framework.com we go to an event and I think there's one event called John's event so I could actually copy paste this link and send it to you right now and you would be able to pull this in from this 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 page up on the internet right mm -hmm. so if I sent this to you, Ian, in our Gravity server. Why don't you do that and share your screen so people can see what's happening? I'm going to come back for a second. Stop sharing my screen. Ian, why don't you, why don't you share your screen for a second so people can see that that's what ha would happen. Did you send that in Slack? I sent it on Slack. I can send it in here, too. Can uh, here, I'll send it right here. There we go. Should be within Zoom now, too. Cool. So this is like, if you've ever used an event platform and you need to send a link to your friend to attend your event, um, this, would be the, this would be the structure of the event that you're sending to them. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So it's just essentially working right now. So yeah, this is all working. So mm -hmm. um, I know you and I are talking about many different ideas for this whole framework, um, but one of them is for the Nomad Cruise. And um, I 
it, on the Nomad Cruise, uh, there's many different types of meetups and events happening all over the ship, right? Um, mm -hmm. So the idea will be that um, an administrator can go in and actually create events that are happening, put the location, the time, and the date, and then anybody within the cruise ship could pull up this events page that you just clicked on over there and see all the events that are happening. Yeah. All right. So let's 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 dive a, a step deeper though. So um, can, let me grab the screen back. Cool. Okay. Um, so now that we've identified this and we've identified that this particular file contains the information that is being shown um, here, right? So, so anything that's showing up in this, in this JSON file here, for anybody that's watching, JSON is just a format. Um, there's an XML is another format, but JSON is a very good format to pass data around between Python and JavaScript. And it's a great way. There's also a way to verify data with, uh, You wouldn't necessarily, you, you can use this in a production environment, but as the project grows really big, you would actually switch this to using a database. But on a small scale system, a file is working just fine. Um, so what Gravity has by default is its database is just straight files that are, j uh, that are JSON formatted. Uh, it's a JSON formatted file database. Um, okay, so we now, let's, let's look at this real quick. So I'm going to go to Gravity Webinar. And if you see this, I are for this event. I believe I've actually already registered for this event. So I'm just going to switch my email to be something that's not real. And I'm going to say register. And it comes back and says, you are now confirmed for this event. Okay. Where did that data go? And how did it get there? So when I actually clicked that registration button, what happened was it sent a message from my browser up to the Gravity server. And I, th there's, a lar there's a whole step of se uh, sequence of events that happened to get there. And I'm not sure we want to dive into all of them, but I want to show some of them right now. So if I send a message to the server, basically I have a structure of a message that goes up and I say event register and I have to create this message that has a command that says event register. And if you, sh I'll, I'll show the message in another, um, in another video we can do. But basically when I get this message that has command equals event register, I, find that in, I start looking for messages that are coming in, I, I'm looking for what command equals. So I look at this and I go to message uh, parser, excuse me, and I look for command equals event register. So a message comes in, I find what the command equals. If the command equals event register, then I'm gonna go to this message handlers. And then I'm gonna look for this function, handle event register. I'm looking for that function inside of the message handlers.py class, and that becomes here, okay? So I then find this function. Message JSON is the message that was sent from the client. From the browser, it was coming in here. I then look for, I, I create a response message, and then I start looking for the information that's inside of the, um, inside of the message. And for this particular um, message that needs to come in to register a user, and actually this is probably should, should return an error in the event that these are not present right now. So this is a bug. But if it is present, um, get the event item out of the message that was sent from the client. I then get the registration info, 
and I send that information into the class gravity events and register for the event. So now I'm going to go and find the gravity events class, which is here, and I'm going to look for event register. So then once you get in here, remember that ID we were looking at that identified each, each event? Yeah. Which was up here. So I first have to find the, the event that we're registering for. So I look for the event ID, make sure it's present in the message. Um, and then I look up the event and find this event. And then I, yeah, so I get the information. Then I open the um, event registration file, look up and find the particular record I'm looking for in the database. And then basically what I do is I start um, searching through the database for the event. And there's also, this is a bit of a complicated one because I'm actually using two different files. Um, for anybody that knows um, databases and relation to the base, databases, this is actually kind of a, a join function because I have one file that contains the events and I have one file that contains the registrations and they're linked by that ID. And basically goes through this whole function and puts the data in here. So if I now look at uh, registrations.json and I look at this, these are keyed off of the event ID. Let's, so for Johannes' meetup, this is the event ID. I did put the title in there just so I can see it here. And then these are all the people that I've registered for this event. And this is the information. So their email, their first name, their last name, the time that they actually registered, and whether they have actually checked in or not to the event. Does that all make sense? Yeah. Cool. So not to overwhelm you, I think it would be good to like dive through this. Um, but I'm going to go. This whole thing. I get this back end page that most users won't see unless they're an administrator. So I then go to this page. This is dummy data. Sorry for the text messages. Um, but I'm going to go and I'm going to look at manage events and I see gravity webinar. If I click on this little person right here, I get a page of all their information. Cool. And for some reason this isn't working right now because this does work. I think I'm checked on a wrong branch, but basically you would be able to check in and out, uh, users through this button. You would be able to edit their information and delete their registration. So this would be if you're Bori or you're Johannes on the cruise and you're managing uh, events or uh, if we get to the next level where individual people on the, um, on the ship in the conference are able to create their own events, they would be able to see who's registered does the same thing except this gives you more privileges than on the on the user side so um, I'm gonna log out so not make this too long so I want you to understand too that there is a I'm gonna just show myself for a second so there is a part so there's first like I just get the page and I show the page and then there's what's called an Ajax request and I go and I send another request to the server and I can get more information and anytime I'm I'm submitting information it's actually going over this Ajax request so when I registered for an event I send a new message up and that goes through a different pathway but it, and it goes through the API so an API is formatted in our system as JSON messages and then I send it back, and then I can update the page. So there's two different ways of like talking to the server. So you can either get it first on the view, and then send the view down to the page, or you can get it in the background using an AJAX request, and that will send it back, and you can update it in the background. Do you have any working examples of that on it right now? Yeah. So. 
that was the same thing. So remember the routes went to this controllers, right? So this mm -hmm. was the server side getting the HTML and then the, what this message parser, these are the backend Ajax requests that are happening. So any, any of these functions handles a particular message. Um, I wish I could show you a message right now. Let me see if I have one. Can you share the screen too? Oh yeah, sorry. So any of these functions here are handling individual messages based on what the command equals. So if command is contact delete, I go into the message handlers class. And these are things that happen in the background, not the foreground. So I then come in here and I would open the class gravity contacts. I would send in the contact info of the contact I want to delete. Um, then it would for what it, based on what happens, if, if it went well, it would send, it would create a message that everything went well. If it went poorly, it would create an error message saying we could not edit the edit or delete the user and it would send the information back to the browser. Um, so if you want to see on the client side how that happens, um, that's done in, let's see, public. Okay, so this is submit event registration, which we already talked about. Basically what I do is I pull out of jQuery from the, the DOM, uh, document object model, uh, the first name, the last name, and the email. And that was what showed up. That was what showed up in this form, right? So I needed the mm -hmm. first name, the last name, and the email. So I then pull out the first name, the last name, and the email. I get the event ID, which I've hidden on the page somewhere, but I can still access it. And then I create this message. I say message type equals request. Uh, the command equals event register. I create an event item with the ID in it, and I create the registration info for the first name, last name, and email. I then send that message to the server using this Ajax uh, syntax, it goes up through the API um, into the server. That's where the message handler class looks for what type of message it is. It finds the particular handler, handles the message. On the response, I then get the response back and then I update the page. And basically, I all I do here is that I redirect the page to another page which says it's confirmed and I put the event label on the page. So if I do this again, um, let's see, at, at test2.com, I basically got the, got Uh, okay. Yeah. So that's probably a lot to process all at once. And I think you probably need to go see more of how it's working to kind of understand it. So, yeah, because I mean, um, yeah, I think that's a great breakdown of it, of where, where it's at right now. And so, um, so yeah, that'll there, probably be a useful video for people that are onboarding onto the onto the project, right? Yeah, it'd be great. So the idea is there's two different ways of, of talking to the server. There is the front end way where you just go to the website, it pulls on HTML, you see it. And then there's the second way, which is over the API. So the API, we're using the API on the browser side to talk back and forth over Ajax. If somebody wanted to build an app, they would be able to gain the same ac the access to the same information uh, over and over the API, just talking to it with their own AJAX talk back and forth. Cool. So that's why, like, as much as I've tried to do it, everything is um, all the information is available by the API. Like, only only the 
the front end page, it shows the information to start, but as much like everything should be available over the API. And that's why there's all these message handlers based on which message. So anytime you're passing new information back and forth, you're creating new messages uh, for that to be handled. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, everything I want to discuss after that is going to be involved just like the specific little things we're dealing with right now. So right. So let's right talk real quick before we end. I got to go get some dinner. Um, basically, if you wanted to create a new page, so we're, we were talking about creating a dashboard, right? Um, we were talking about creating a dashboard for information so every day people could see announcements of what's going on. So what would we do to make that happen? The first thing we would do... You might want to share your screen. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, I think actually the thing that we were dealing with last was trying to make it so that the new blogs yep. would link to their uh, I labels. I think that's more, uh, basically what you could do for that is look at the event system and yeah. copy it into the blog system. It's very, very similar. Um, okay, cool. So if you plan to do that, that would be great. I would say 70% of the code is already there to do this. And then it's just copying um, the event system to the blog system. Um, but I do want to show you this particular example because... Um, it, it's kind of like how any new page would work. So if I want to create a dashboard page, what I would do would I would first go to Gravity Routes and I try to keep everything in alphabetical order as much as possible. So I'm going to copy this and A, B, C, D, E. So I'm going to create this. I'm going to say dashboard. And then I'm going to go to Gravity Controllers Dashboard. Okay. So mm -hmm. I've now created a new route called Dashboard. And then I, I'm going to do Gravity Controllers Dashboard. So then we're going to go to the Gravity Controllers uh, thing. And we're going to go up here. And the structure, this is not the best. So let's just put it here. And we're going to copy this function and change this to be dashboard and say gets the dashboard page. Um, oh, we're not going to copy this one, by the way, because we're not doing an admin. These are for the admin controllers. I'm going to undo what we just did. Sorry, guys. Um, just so you know, there's two different classes, Gravity Controllers Admin, and then below here, there is let's see, class Gravity Controllers. Okay. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it here, and it's going to say Dashboard, and I'm going to go to Dashboard, but Dashboard.j2 doesn't exist yet. So now where do we get that? That's in the views folder. So we're going to go here and we're going, let's copy one of these files. So the easiest thing to do probably would be to copy the about page because there's not much. It says. I'm going to say. This is the dashboard and let's see. I just move all this and say any information that should be in the dashboard will show up here. And then I'm just going to delete this line for now. Um, I'm not sure that's right, actually. I'm a, yeah, that's, that's the top. And then the bottom, I don't have any information passed in here. So I'm just going to say um, this P, this is the body of the 
dashboard. And here would be gravity dashboard body. Okay, so I've created a new page, um, dashboard section. I'm using the main template because it's on the main page right now to keep the same format of the structure. Um, and that actually is pretty much it to get a new page to show up. So we've created the route. We said gravity controllers dashboard. We created the controller, which gets the function, renders the template dashboard.j2, and recreated the view. Now, I did change the, the code, um, not just the, the, the files that control the template. So I do have to stop the server and restart it. And then if I go here and I go to localhost dashboard, ah, there's one gotcha here. So because this is uh, password protected, there must be a whitelist. So the one gotcha is that I have to go to our HTTP web handler and add this new route to um, the whitelist. So I'm going to go to uh, two things. Let's say dashboard and dashboard.html. And that again is a piece of code, so I need to stop and restart the server. And then I'm going to, to try this again. And I say, this is the dashboard page. Cool. Cool? Yeah. So that gives you the structure of getting the first page. And then if you wanted to do the back end stuff, you would, you would create JavaScript functions that would talk over AJAX requests. And there's different examples of that all over the website. If you guys are looking at this and want examples of how some of this stuff works, the features page actually shows you some of this stuff. So you can look at the AJAX example and see how this works. It actually sends information back and forth, and that actually is a round trip request that happens. So you can look at this features page for examples on how the, everything works. Got it. Cool. Um, yeah. I will actually commit that code so you can get that as a as a as a as a new dashboard page and upload that. Um, and then the idea will be that we'll create a a new admin page where people can put announcements up and they would show up on the dashboard. Okay, cool. Cool. Sounds good. And yeah, so for anybody that's watching this, like the, the structure is like, a, there's a clear structure of how to create it. What we're trying to do here is give you a baseline framework. So it's not that we're going to give you every feature in the world, but you have a structure of creating events. You have a structure of a blog blogging system. Uh, we have actually integrated Stripe integration um, and we want to be able to have a dashboard and have announcements and uh, Hopefully for the next nomad cruise. We'll be able to use this and showcase how this is possible to work in an offline environment as well